Today on Movie Wallace, we talk about Wonka, Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, and Argyle. It's time for Movie Wallers. Hi, this is Joe. Hi, it's Rashmi. And yes, yes, well. Movie Wallers is your weekly dose of film reviews, movie news, and general banter in theatres, on DVD, online streaming, or in the back of an airplane. If you love the movies, this show is for you. Mm-hmm. Greetings. I got it right this time. You did. I think last time I was nervous for being on camera. Oh. And we're on camera again. We are on camera again. It was a bit of an experiment. So I put a private link to the podcast on YouTube. So if you went to our website, you could get to the link. Uh, It's not publicized in any way. So it hasn't got a ton of views, but uh, it was more of an experiment. But I've had people who said that they watched it, the YouTube link, at least three different people. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to keep trying because, again, I think YouTube has just changed it's wiring behind the scenes so oh. that you can now actually directly publish your podcast through youtube yeah and i haven't figured out all the mechanics of it but but that's um, dangerous what if you put something horrible it's like any podcast you can or oh, podcast yeah yeah but yeah. not the the video the video as well the video as well but okay. yeah but it's it's like youtube's algorithm point right. point being i think um the future of podcasting somehow is going to be on youtube and, it's going to be like tv again and and all of the yeah. you know, 20 yeah. year olds that we spoke to 20 Correct. and 30 year olds were like podcasts they were like great where are you on youtube and yes. I, was like, I don't know uh, we're not on youtube we we're we on, are now we're, we're, we, we may be now so uh, the, the con- did you like how yasti continues. and i were dancing to the imaginary music because you didn't put the music on for us i can't play it out loud if you, the two of you are even Slightly professional, you would be wearing headsets. Yeah, how many times does Joe tell us that? You you hate it. We hate the headphones. (laughs) It just feels... Like I feel, which right? Is, like I mean, but you like them. I'm in my own podcast world here. Yeah, I can't hear any of this. I can wear mine, but yeah, okay. My my promise. Next time onwards, I'm why? Because then I'll have to. (laughs) Rashmi doesn't want to be uncoiffed. Okay, then I. No, it's not (laughs) uncoiffed. Yes, they're just. But how do they help? Anyway, we shall, we shall, yes, let's yes. proceed. This isn't a um, podcast yes. about headphones. Yes. So It's Friday and we're, it cheers, Friday. happy Friday. Um, absolutely. We don't normally drink on our podcast. I think this may be a first, this first may be the time. First I've one. About Second time on camera, first <laughs> well, time. I have <laughs> talked about it for years. Our podcast <laughs> can only get better with mm-hmm. drinks. <laughs> but anyway, cheers, cheers. cheers. happy cheers. Friday. Happy cheers. Friday. We made and it. we are um, drinking um, delicious spritz. So the reason for the drinking is um, I had an open bottle of Prosecco from last weekend and we thought, what better occasion? It's Friday night. I've got a holiday weekend. I have President's Day off. Um, I know. (laughs) That's the the one thing about where I work. We get a lot of holidays, which is fantastic. Um, But we had these... They, we had the Prosecco, so yep. we said, let's, let's well, do yes. some Thank you, thank and you for had bringing some, him. Yes. yes, and we had the uh, delicious Saint-Germain, which is a elder flower liqueur, which yes. is delicious. It so is what, most delicious. What Rashmi is talking about is Yazdi and her spritzes are elderflower based. Yes. Saint-Germain liqueur. Yes, delicious. Yes. And I've got the Aperol spritz, which is the bougie <laughs> thing to do right now, but okay. I like it because it's orange. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds you of Lucas Aid. It's it's delicious. It's dangerous because I could have six of oh, those. Oh, I know. It's so six. it goes down I'm so not easily. I'm exaggerating. I could it's have very six. good. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like you've had many Yazdi from the <laughs> <laughs> from the depths of your bottle. <laughs> yes, yes. My bottle is but almost gone. Yes. All right. Three uh, movies. I have things to talk about, like Oscar noms and things like that, but we probably won't do that this time. No. Um, because we have three movies mm-hmm. to chit-chat through, so uh, we shall come come back to that at yes. some point. And no recommendations either, because nope. we have three movies. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's get going then. I think um, we have Wonka, we have Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, and Argyle. So... I have the intro. Take it away. Okay, so um, 
written and based on the original story by Roald Dahl. Um, this is based on the extraordinary character at the center of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, um, which was one of Roald Dahl's most iconic children's books and one of the best-selling books of all time. Uh, Wonka tells the wondrous story of how the world's greatest inventor, magician, and chocolate maker became the beloved Willy Wonka we know today. So this is directed by Paul King, who did Paddington and Paddington 2, which we all loved. Um, and it's written by Simon Farnaby and Paul King. And it has a great cast in Timothy Chalamet, Hugh Grant, Carla Lane, Keegan-Michael Kay is in here, um, Patterson mm. Joseph, Matt Lucas, amongst others. And we've all seen this one. This is a bit of a catch-up. Um, this was pre-Christmas, but I believe it's still, it's still showing in the theaters. In the theaters. Yeah. And, um, you know, Wonka is a beloved character to many of us. So, um, Yazdi, why don't you kick us off? What did you think of Wonka? Was this worth the, the trip back for the prequel? Um, yes, I think it was. I... Uh I went into this movie with really bad attitude. I thought this was going to be one of these overly manufactured, overly plastic, like, you know, Tim Burton's been making some movies like that Alice in Wonderland, which after a while, it's just hard to watch because it's so... And, it's he so, did, and he did a version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well too, with yeah. Johnny Depp. So. Because they're so rote and mechanical mm. and joyless, even though it's it's all about the visual you know, visuals and no heart. So I, I went in this with a bad attitude and the movie slowly, it took a while, but slowly and surely won me over. I, I grudgingly, but most definitely love this film. Oh, Joe. So like you, Yasti, um, as soon as I heard they were doing this, I was like, is nothing sacred? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the gene, well, first of all, Roald Dahl was my favorite author as a child. The books are very, very precious to me. The film adaptation took a long time with Gene Wilder to, to grow on me over the years, but it did. The songs are iconic. Um, the imagery is iconic. Um, and I'm like, oh, why are we doing another priest old franchise? Leave Wonka alone. It's perfection. So I, I was grumpy too. Um, you know, the movie is very polished. It's, it has its charm. And ultimately, I have to kind of admit that it, it won me over. Um, what I will say is it's not, it hasn't left a lasting impression. So, you know, I kind of hope we don't get more of this because, I, you know, they did what they set out to do. They gave us more of a current origin story for Willy Wonka, which I believe was not based on any of Roald Dahl's mm -hmm. books. He, you know, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory starts with Wonka as an adult in the, in the Chocolate Factory. There were no prequels. So, um, yeah, begrudgingly, I kind of enjoyed it. And, um, you know, that's high praise indeed, because I didn't want to like it. This is not phoned in. I was worried that yeah. this would be, you know, in the, like you said, Joe, pre-sold franchise. I thought this would be more of kind of the Tim Burton type, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I'm really happy to say it's beautiful in the way it's presented. I love the characters. Timothy Chalamet is very charming as Wonka. I love the sets. I love the cinematography. I think Hugh Grant is absolutely adorable yes. as the Oompa Loompa. A lot was made about the fact that, you know, they used Hugh Grant instead of using someone... I don't know what the right little terminology, person, little is, person, uh, oh, okay. um, you know, there are many of them who are really good actors. I'm sure they could have got Peter Dinklage. Um, mm. but I think, I think it was great. I thought he did a really good job. And, uh, this is kind of a, it's, it's kind of, it's quite magical in its feeling. Mm. Again, I don't know that we'll be talking about this next year, but I really enjoyed this movie too. And I was a great Charlie and the chocolate factory, Gene Wilder, um, fan i will watch that every time it comes on um the television i really like this too yeah i think this movie has really good staying power this is the kind of movie which could play you know every holiday season and i wouldn't be opposed to it showing up on the television it's very 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 cgi heavy mm. but it's not just cgi for the sake of cgi which is what those tim burton movies yeah. had become for a while it's actually delightful um, it's kind of clever. The whole bit with the Oompa Loompa, um, you know, how they've used it and they've imaginatively kind of managed the difference in sizes. It all works very well. And for me, the biggest surprise of all was, and it just really, really annoys me, is that 
Timothy Chalamet can sing. Yeah. I mean, he's not an excellent singer, but boy, can he carry he's a tune. He's got a good voice. He's got a good voice. I'm, and I, I was convinced, right? By the time he sang his third song, I was convinced, okay, somebody else has done this. And when the credits came on, I was like, oh my God, that's really him. So good for him. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, he can carry a tune. Uh, you know, I, I think part of my grumpiness was the casting of Timothy Chalamet, which although physically I think he looks like a Willy Wonka type character, um, you know, as of late, um, some of his kind of outside the movie antics and, and his attitude um, made me feel like he may not have sufficient charm for the character, but he did. He brought a mm-hmm. whole, and, and this speaks to his uh, uh, amazing versatility as an actor. I'm looking forward to seeing him in Dune 2 coming up. Yes. Um, but, yes. you know, he, he did have that, that joyous charm of the Willy Wonka character, the fact that he could sing. Um, you know, he had to carry this movie in, in many ways. And I think his his effortless kind of um, ability to, to, to do all of the things required for the character just, just, you know, won me over. And it's a very handsomely made movie. It's very respectful to the content. It's very old fashioned in the way it tries to go about things. It's not trying to do things in any kind of, you know, kind of a postmodern take on the Wonka thing. Like this is old school movie making. Uh, with all of the kind of color and and dazzle and yes there's cgi but cgi is just you know the new background you know it's the new uh, matte painting it's a new set building right it does all of that but it does it in a way that's just you know joyful and colorful and and, and accomplished it almost feels like a stage play that's been converted into absolutely. a movie it feels very yeah, set driven um but but again, beautifully captured and imagined. It doesn't actually take place in many different locations. Um, and I think there are some really good comedic moments in this. There's some Genuine. really good light relief in here, which is fun. So um, And yeah. good casting. I thought there was yeah. very good casting. Michael Keegan Key is yep. so good, willing to kind of just go all the way, making a fool of himself. Uh, Olivia Coleman in a small role, but she's memorable. I still remember her from the movie. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, let's not underestimate, again, how difficult it must have been for, you know, you Grant to kind of inhabit that. And it, 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 this should, some of this should just, they should fall flat on their face. It shouldn't mm-hmm. work. But they make it work. And I think, you know, Paul King and Simon Farnaby, who also were involved in the Paddington movies, they, they should, I think it's time we gave them credit because they really are able to conjure up delight and magic in their movies. Yeah, so, and I love yeah. the chemistry between Calla Lane, who plays this adorable little character called Noodle, and Timothy Chalamet. Again, I think he really embodies that young, growing, um, you know, Willy Wonka that will become eventually Gene Wilder in, mm-hmm. our, in, in, our, in our heads. Right, right. So, uh, carry on. Uh, yes, his rumba just came rumba on. Just came on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a For anyone that thinks that movie Wallace well is not recorded live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we were talking about magic. Yes. Um, All right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, sum this one up. Wrap I, this up. Go ahead, Joe, you go. Sure. So, um, yeah, begrudgingly, um, it was uh, enjoyable enough for me to actually recommend it to people. Um, you know, this movie... I think, you know, we, we missed a little something by not seeing it on the big screen. Um, Agree. This th- one would have been lovely on the big screen. But, you know, it worked perfectly well in our home theatre environment and, and uh, we enjoyed it a lot. Um, yeah, I'm going to give this, um, yeah, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, although I think that's a little bit of a stingy 7 because it it's just handsomely made. It's a very well polished, you know, it's there's, there's film craft, there's theatre craft, it's, People who know what they're doing made this, and it shows. And they, they didn't, they didn't do anything other than give it their very best to to, to be respectful. And 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 for that, I'm 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 gonna, um, you know, thank them. So yeah, I didn't. Good stuff. Yes, D. I think there is a dearth of good movies that the whole family can sit down at at any time, but particularly during the holidays and watch together, from grandma to you know, four year old. And I think this is one of the movies. It's not, it's not plastic. It has a heart. Uh, And it has actually, you know, the songs are actually pretty catchy. Mm -hmm. Uh, There were a couple of the songs, which I'm like, Hey, I don't mind listening to this again. Like Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind even, you know, buying those songs. And then the dialogue is pretty good too. There's a piece of dialogue, which keeps repeating in the movie, which is 
the greedy beat the needy any day, which I really like, you know. So it, it has, there's nothing, like you said, Rashmi, at the beginning, there's nothing phoned in about this. A lot of work and consideration has to be, uh, has been given to it. Uh, there will be some who will poo-poo it and say, you know, this is just, you know, uh, whatever, just drivel. But I don't think it's drivel. I think it has a good heart. I actually give it eight out of 10 because I, wow. I'm usually... I'm usually, like, people ask me, what can I watch with the family? And I'm like, I don't know, everything has swear words or everything mm. has, <laughs> you know, some nudity or something. So I'm glad I can recommend Wonka. And by, by the time the giraffes showed up, I was like, okay, I give up. I just, <laughs> I, I succumb to the charms of this movie. It's a delight. Yeah, 8 out of 10. Very nice. And I'm going to stick with uh, Joe 7 out of 10. I think this is like a delightful box of chocolates um, that one can pick from. Flavors, tastes colors beautiful yeah there we are wonka okay movie number two is aquaman and the lost kingdom okay i have the intro again um so really they made another one i didn't <laughs> think the first one did that well to merit another one but anyway after failing to defeat aquaman the first time black manta wields the power of the mythic black trident to unleash an ancient and malevolent force hoping to end his reign of terror aquaman forges an unlikely alliance with his brother orm the former king of atlantis setting aside their differences they join forces to protect their kingdom and save the world from irreversible destruction it sounds mighty gobbledygook if you ask me um this is directed by james wan yes that james wan of uh the furious series of the conjuring um he is back again maybe to save the franchise yazdi you can let us know um it runtime again it's a long marvel movie not long it's not marvel it is DC, right? DC, yes. Get it's it right. DC. There will be a queue um, it, of people waiting yes, to beat it you. Yes, it is the DC <laughs> universe. It, it is two hours and four minutes. It stars, stars Jason Momoa, Patrick Wilson, Yaha Abdul Mateen II, Amber Heard, Nicole Kidman, Randall Park, amongst some others. And wasn't this the one where they tried to erase Amber Heard out of the movie? Was there Possibly. some talk about Possibly. erasing yeah. some of her? Possibly, bit. Yes. So Joe and I did not get to see this. Um, unfortunately, we were traveling. Um, but Yazdi, you did see this one just before Christmas during the uh, the end of year rush. So tell us, is this worth spending the $20 as you were like squealing about before we started the <laughs> yes. podcast on, on Amazon or Apple? Yes, so it is $20 to stream this movie on Amazon or Apple because it's no longer in theaters and please save yourself the $20, save yourself the headache, save yourself the utter joyless despair of watching oh, probably really? one of the worst <laughs> movies of the year. It is a lump of coal. There is not really? there is not one redeeming thing about this movie. Not it's, even Momoa's muscles. Well, no, that might work for you, but Yazdi, I'm not so, so sure. Well, I mean, I, I'd be happy with anybody's muscles or whatever, but it's, <laughs> it's, it. The whole thing seems to have been made in a in a green room, right? And and we were right. talking about just in the previous movie in Wonka about how everything is CGI and everything looks made up, but there is a flourish and a pop. In this movie, Wonka, the CGI looks so overpowering, overbearing. It all looks fake. Uh, Paul Wilson, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and there's this, you know, Patrick there's, Wilson. It's Patrick Wilson. Thank you. Patrick Wilson and Jason Momoa have this kind of rivalry in the movie. That's one thing I kind of remember from the movie. But otherwise, you know, I think really, I mean, it's a shame. It really is a shame. I just, I, I cannot tell you how bad this was. So I, this is I watched it on a big screen and I watched it in 3D and I was like, oh, oh I really? cannot. So yeah. what's interesting, Yazdi, is I just looked at the tomato meter and it's running 34% by the critics, but it's running at 81% with the audience score. So I think those who were really invested in the first Aquaman movie, you know, I wasn't so invested and Amber Heard is here and Nicole Kidman are, is here and Patrick Wilson is here, Yaya Abdul-Martin second, God bless him, he was in that uh, horror movie uh, about, you go in the mirror and Us. you say... No. He was in Us, he was in Candyman. He was in Us. Yeah, Candyman, that's he was in Candyman. Yeah. He plays the bad guy here. They're all trying, but I don't know, it didn't work for me. I, I, I think if you're really into I I never read the Aquaman comics. Right. And I'm not, in, I wasn't into the first movie as much as well, but it was just, there's nothing of redeeming quality in this movie, I think. More dull than, uh, more joyless than Barbie? 
dare I say it? Gosh, yes. <laughs> really, I yeah, didn't yeah, think yeah, that yeah. was possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are, I can read you my notes. I read, this is fake, all tacky, so <laughs> joyless, so fake looking, no vision, no thought, either with visuals or with the plot. It is all CGI mayhem. This is so bad, lump of coal. The fuck nonsense is this? <laughs> oh, okay. So, so let's not waste it made you angry. more time it made on me that. Angry, yeah, yeah, I was like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes, just score this one and let's move on. Yeah, the dialogue is bad. I mean, I, again, I, I think if you're really into Aquaman, if you're in the DC Comics universe, if you want to see the next chapter, by all means, see it. I don't think this movie furthers the cause of cinema in any ways. Not that it should, but it's just very... Um, it's, is it even it's, it's fan not service? Trying. What? Is it even fan service? I think it is fan service. I think, again, Patrick Wilson and him, they are trying. Those two are trying to kind of build something out of it. Um, you know, Martin Scorsese very famously got into a lot yes. of trouble because he said that, you know, uh, superhero movies are sucking the soul out of cinema. Well, I'm sorry, this movie gives Martin Scorsese, you know, this is what he was Ample talking ammunition. about. Ample ammunition. Ample yeah. ammunition. This is what he was talking about. Mm. Uh, three out of ten. A very generous Ooh. three out wow. of ten. Wow. Wow. That's, yeah, that's was, low for you. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I, that's angry yeah, low. I don't want, yeah, I don't want to have anything to do with it ever again. Sorry. Okay. I might have to watch it now. Yeah, you have to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Thumbs down by Yazdi. Big thumbs down. Yes. Movie number three. <coughs> Movie number three then is Argyle. Excellent. And who's going to... Yazdi's got this I one. I can introduce Tell Argyle. So a few, a few years ago, uh, there was this little movie which came out of nowhere called The Kingsman. And uh, it became a big hit for good reason. And uh, the director of the movie, uh, uh, you know, he uh, he had previously made... Uh, uh, Kingsman. No, before Kingsman, he had made Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass, that's right. And he right. had made so many other movies. And I love the Kingsman movie. I love I, the Kingsman. I like the, yes. I like the uh, sequel to it as well, even though it's not as, get, as good as the original. So that whole team, I think they want to create a whole world around the King's World, Kingsman universe, and this is the next in the entry. And it's the movie Argyle, which is directed by Matt Porter, based on writing by Matt Azalea, Matt Porter, sorry, Max Azalea, Matt Porter, and Phil Primason. And <clears throat> it has an amazing star cast. So we have uh, Henry Cavill, we have... Uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the... Did Dua you Leapers the, in here. I was looking uh, at a 2011 version of Argyle. So let me let me correct my... Uh, oh, that's hilarious. You, that is hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> who are these people? So, so, yeah, Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Henry correct. Cavill, John Senna, uh, yes. Brian Cranston, Dua Leaper makes a cameo in here. We have um, yeah. Samuel L. Jackson uh, is in pops up in here. Um, gosh, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's a terrific cast. And a, I, I should clarify this one is directed by Matthew Wan and uh, it's written by Jason Fox, F U C H S. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> yeah, I okay. thought you said that too. <laughs> okay, I did not. I was, I, was, I was giving the writing credits for the 2011 Argyles. So. Ah, Fuchs, okay. not Fox. Is I it, think yes. How do you pronounce F U C H S? Fuchs. Any way you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I insist on calling it Jason Fox. Fuchs. But anyway, <laughs> Jason Fuchs, yeah. Um, Ariana DeBose is here in a small role. Richard E. Grant is here. Uh, there are many, many uh, individuals. This movie came with a lot of fanfare. Catherine O'Hara is in this. Her first mm -hmm. big role since Schitt's Creek. Oh, goodness. Yes. Yep. There so, she is. Uh, what did you guys think of Argyle? Um, I think this is a fun, silly, unexpected movie which twists and turns, and I love the cat. <laughs> I had a really good time. I was expecting... I don't know what I was expecting because it had a great cast, but I also thought, oh, well, this is like February. This is early February when mm -hmm. we did the screening. I was thinking, oh my God, you know, normally you get sort of the clutter, yeah, the, the decluttering of, of the, studios the, in the first you know, the, two months. The C&D lists. But um, you know what? This kept me entertained and I saw it's got an absolute thrashing on the tomato meter, which I don't agree with. I thought this was a fun movie. Joe? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of washed over me. In fact, you know, uh, I got a little busted in that last um, movie because I was watching the trailer just to kind of remind myself of the, the nonsense that this was. Um, 
It is. It, here's what I say. It, it made a lot more sense to me when the credits played and I saw Matthew Vaughan because I, I went into this with no knowledge at all. Mm. And so um, I couldn't quite tune into its tone. It, oh. It's a bit of an oddball of a thing. Um, but that said, I think the jokes worked. Yeah. And for, for all of the things that I think people can get snooty about, um, it passed kind of a, the, you know, the, the laugh test for me. I, I did have a, f- a few chuckles. Uh, the cameos were great. Yeah. Like, you know, Dua Lipa's only in here for a short well, moment. Well, don't give it away. Well, okay. I guess I have already. But um, my, my point is, you know, she, she pops in and it, it kind of elevates the, the movie for it, right? It's a little mad for it. She's, um, and, and everyone else who, who's in here just, you know, they're having fun with it. It's, it's not high art. It's not a patch on the Kingsman movies, yeah. but I think if you are in tune with that kind of humor, uh, kind of off kilter, yeah. offbeat, Matthew Vaughn flavored yeah. humor, and it's a very specific flavor of humor, um, then you'll like it. If if it if that's not your thing, don't bother because yeah. this is just this is like distilled. This will wind you up. Then this is distilled Matthew Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. Yasdi, what did you think? So I, I we say this all the time or I've said this all the time at least, that, you know, if it's a Friday evening and you've had a couple of drinks like we are and you want to go watch a movie and decompress at the end of a long week, then this is the perfect film for that. It's kind of silly. It's goofy. None of it really makes sense. Um, And it's fun. I mean, I was thoroughly, thoroughly entertained even as I was scratching my head like, is this plot written by AI? Like, what's going (laughs) on? Like, it's like, what is going on? It, it It just seemed like somebody was just ricocheting you know different characters interact with others for no apparent reason um there is a scene which comes late in the movie i think in the last third there are two of them where uh the bryce dallas howard character and the sam rockwell character they are you know infiltrated you know the villain's lair and uh, this this you know, these uh, things start exploding with colored gases. And yes. They, and they start doing it's this fantastic. ridiculous ballet, right? It's fantastic. They start doing this ridiculous. And I'm like, oh, this is the movie I was missing. I wish every minute of this movie was like that scene because that's what the Kingsman was. And the Kingsman, famously, the bad guys have chips in, implanted in their heads. And in the last act of the movie, he, you know, they, they, uh, they blow up, they finagle with those chips and their heads explode. So I wanted that level of gonzo craziness. And this Argyle only in some places kind of really went over the top. And I wish the entire movie had done that. So I kind of missed that, that, that burst of insane creativity that Kingsman had. I think this one is lacking, but for what it is, it's pretty harmless. It's fun. It's okay. Could do better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no, I mean, I think the, the, the thing that I kept struggling with at, at the beginning of the movie was it felt like it was made up as it went along. Yes. Like, I That's what I meant by it was made up by, it seemed like AI made it up. Like, yeah, I, I couldn't <laughs> connect. And then this happens and then, yeah, and then that, that happens. happens. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't connect one scene to the next. I was like, oh, well now, we're, okay, so this is happening. And, and I think that's deliberate to throw us off the pace because nothing makes sense and, yeah. uh, and the plots and the twists and the character revelations and the you know it it all is it's absolutely nonsensical it's because cool. you think well if they were the if they were who they who we right. know them to be now then why didn't they do that then because it would have been so much easier than trying to do it now and you know this that that will make perfect sense when you watch the movie but and i can't i, I don't want to say who, it, who who the characters are but the the, the way that the characters change through the course of the movie and with the revelations, I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. But it's all there. It's actually it's there. all there. If I think if you're, if well, you were to go back and watch the movie, it all makes sense now that you know the end and it's all there. You've just got to follow along. Sure. And I think they do a really good job of throwing us off the scent. Look, I mean, I think you can't take it too seriously. Yeah, that, that's you're, the it's, ultimate it's message. It's not war and peace. Don't as try we always and figure say. it out. Just, just, yeah, just, just sit there and yeah, be entertained by it. Exactly. And I, I just think it's really well cast. Everyone is so well cast. And I think Joe, you said it. Everyone's having so much fun mm. 
It's really, really fun. And I like Bryce Dallas Howard as the main character. She's an unlikely hero in, in the movie. You know, you wouldn't cast her. Um, yeah, so I, I like I like that they've they've cast her as the main main lead here. So that's that's my another beef. And it's not the beef of the movie, but it's a beef about the people who are marketing this. Because the poster for this movie has 10 people on it. And the two people who are the leads in the movie, I'm not I'm not going to give their names. The two people who are leads in the movie are like way at the back. They're like huh. the person six. Like I'm looking here at this poster, which yeah. is the most common poster. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The two yeah. leads are literally at the back of this. Like, I don't know. But that's OK. This. That's OK. But no, it's it's kind of misleading people. You're leading people to think that you're watching a movie with these three leads when they are all cameos. The, the actual leads are way at the back on the poster. But that's okay. I think that's okay. Uh, but look, it there's a clue a on the poster there. The, 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 the slogan of the movie is the greater the spy, the bigger the lie. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And I love it the is cat. A lie, yes. The, cat, the is, cat was very cute. cat is adorable. It's a very CGI cat, very yeah, obviously. Yeah, but it's but, great. Yeah. And you know, whoever put... Henry Cavill in those boxy suits and that flat top I hair. I love it. No, it's I so love bad. It. It's I like, love it. It's so make, bad. It's can, so bad. It's good. How can you make Henry Cavill look embarrassing? Like that, do you, that's a really high but bar. That's the whole point of <laughs> I it. I mean, he looks, oh my It's God. cheesy. It's, it's so cheesy. cheesy. But I love that it's that cheesy because again, if it wasn't cheesy, Yazdi, then we would be saying, what the hell was Henry Cavill doing? But it's so cheesy that it's so, it, it's so bad. It's good. I still think what the hell was okay. Henry Cavill I, I thought doing, it was yeah. really funny. I, I, I thought really, he was hilarious. I, I, like he's playing a caricature of himself, right. which I love. I love when people can laugh at themselves. For sure. For yeah. Sure. I, I love Brian Cranston and Catherine O'Hara. Yes, They're not given Sam much to Rockwell do. Sam Rockwell too. Sam Rockwell doesn't get to do much in yeah. movies. So yeah. Even good, John Chayna. He's so John Cena funny. Was good. Uh, and then uh, Ariana DeBose is not in it for long but I suspect that he's just world building and there's going to be more Argyles God God help us and I have an opinion about that yeah I mean I don't yeah. know if we want to go there now but um, let, I've, got, I've already gone there um, no <laughs> oh I hope there's a no. sequel no. I, I think I, I feel like this is a fun kind of spin off but the Argyle thing has kind of worked itself out for me I'm not sure that I could cope with more unless they find a, a way to kind of um, elevate um, and and get back uh, get us back to the Kingsman tone because of, and I think and the, the Kingsman has that even so though they're do you not, think this they're, is they're part of the Kingsman part, world or do you is. think it's oh, no, just for sure. oh it is for sure for sure, is, yeah. for sure. Ah, I mean, okay. it's got the same you know. it's got the same tone but it's not necessarily the same story I didn't think they were connected I thought in there was a hint world. at that somewhere yeah. is yeah. it yeah okay it's supposed Maybe. to be set in the same world but but yeah, I mean, there's, it feels like it set us up for a whole e expansion. And I'm like, I'm not sure I want that. Let this be a standalone. I, want, I, I would be very happy with a sequel if it would be as gonzo, insane, over the top, crazy as the Kingsman movie was. Right. So there is, there's, again, I can never, I won't forget as long as I live that one scene in the Kingsman movie in the church where there's this. Yes. <laughs> right. I, I love that. In Kentucky with um, in Kentucky, Colin. With Colin. Uh, no, I was going to say Colin, Colin Farrell. It's not Colin, Colin. Firth. With yes. Colin Firth and Samuel L. Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson, right? I want the equivalent of that in this movie. Yeah. There isn't an equivalent. I just well, want that scene at the end. I just want them to just completely throw caution to the wind and just go insane. Okay, so I do have to say one thing that yes. I found very, very impressive was the editing. There are some really complex fight scenes sure. in this movie done sure. on a train, which reminded me a little bit of Bullet Train from a couple of years ago. There are some amazing fight scenes in this movie and the editing of those fight scenes, because you see two people in mm -hmm. the, doing the same moves. That was fantastic. That actually blew my mind. Like, it was so precise. It was so good. Well done, Jason Fox. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wind this one up. Uh, Unless you have anything more to say. You looked at me surprised then. Like, no, no. Oh, what? We're winding this up? Go, yes, D. It's just ridiculous nonsense, but sometimes you want ridiculous nonsense, uh, you know, on a, on a weekend late in the evening and you just want to chill your brain and just laugh and giggle and like scratch your head. Six out of 10, it's fun. I just want this to have, like I said. Legs. I just, just, no, just take off. Just yeah. be even more crazy. Just go yeah. wild. Joe. Yeah, I'm sitting around a six, although I feel like that's a little bit 
um, too too stingy. Then so give I'm, it more. I'm gonna give it a seven, which is Six and I, was, and I was getting there. Yeah. No halves. <laughs> um, I don't do things by halves. Okay. Um, okay. Ooh, but <laughs> uh, but no bottom line is um it, it it it's working really hard to entertain us and it 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 delivers on that um is it um is it accomplished is it polished no it feels a little rough around the edges i feel like it could have done with a, a rewrite or two just to tighten things up one of the criticisms here is that it's too long and it did feel a bit too long um but it, it it's fun. It, it it's set out to entertain and you know um you know, all, more power to them. Yeah. Seven. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a seven as well. I had so much fun at this movie. It's like wearing your favorite sweater. Um did you get the Argyle? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. um yeah. This is really just fun. And I think it's one of those movies, you know, there's this movie called um, He's Just Not That Into You. Do you mm -hmm. remember that movie? Yeah. And on initial watching, I didn't enjoy it at all, but it comes on TV all the time. Mm. And I have grown to love that movie because I put it on all the time whenever it's on. And I think if this one was to play again and, and again and again, I think you could, this could become like a favorite. Yeah. Could it's be. just fun and silly. I like fun and silly. Hence, I love you both. <laughs> There is a house in Colorado in the movie, which is so beautiful. Yes. I was like, I want to find that house. Yes. And live into it. So beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And there is also... And, in, and then a lot done in London. And we were just there. And so it was kind of fun to see it was, London, yeah. I thought. There's also a part... I kept with, nudging Joe like, oh, we were just there. We were just there. Yeah. There's also a part in a winery in France. Yeah. That looks completely CGI. I'm that like, looks that place, so good. I want to go there. <laughs> I'm like, that place doesn't exist. They yeah. just made this up for the movie. But yeah. anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Great it, location. Whoever did the location scouting for this one. Good yeah. job. And yes, the cat is kind of fun. The cat is fun. All right. Cats are always fun. Friday night. 7.30 almost. Yep, yes. let's wrap it up. So um, thank you again for listening or watching. Um, hopefully the, the, the YouTube experiment works out. And um, yeah, um, let us know what you think of the YouTube thing. Um, it's not that much extra, but um, I do have to make sure I'm clothed <laughs> and, uh, and quaffed. Uh, to, <laughs> uh, to to be on camera but uh, no please uh, any feedback would be wonderful um, leave comments on the YouTube page as well and um, like and subscribe to the channel I guess is what I'm going to have to keep saying because every YouTuber um, seems to say that so that will help us um, potentially get movie wallers to more people I'm going to end it here thank you for listening thank you for watching until our next podcast it's too many movies and too little time a goodbye from me and me and me as well